collision theory. In this video, we're going to talk about the basic assumptions of collision theory and think about how we can use it as a framework to understand rates of reaction. So first of all, collision theory is a simple model for understanding the kinetics of reacting species. So this whole topic is called kinetics and it's all about rates of reaction. So we're going to use the framework of collision theory to understand rates of reaction. Now under collision theory, reactants are treated as hard spheres behaving as ideal gases under something called the kinetic theory of gases, which we'll describe a little bit later. And essentially, under the model of collision theory, there are three criteria that have to be satisfied in order for a successful reaction to take place between two reactant particles. So we imagine we have some kind of a system, whether it's a solution or whether it's just a box of some gas, our reactants are hard spheres and they're flying around at some speed, with some can each with some kinetic energy, sort of semi-random motion. So the first thing that must happen for a successful reaction between two reactants is those two particles must collide with one another. They have to meet, they have to have sort of physical contact. Secondly, they have to collide with sufficient energy. We'll formalize that on the next slide, but firstly, they just have to collide with enough energy. And then thirdly, they have to collide in the correct orientation. So essentially, the right parts of the sphere have to be touching when they collide. And again, this will be something that's fleshed out a bit more in later topics. But for now, we can just think of these three criteria. Firstly, particles have to collide, they have to collide with sufficient energy, and they have to collide in the correct orientation or geometry. Okay, so that sufficient energy, that criteria, what we're really talking about is this concept of activation energy. Now, the activation energy is defined as the minimum energy with which reactants must collide for a successful reaction. And it's often given this symbol, Ea. That means if two reactants collide, even if they're in the right geometry, but they collide with an energy less than the activation energy, a reaction will never occur. So we can think about what this looks like in terms of a potential energy profile. Then we have our reactants and our products, and we know that the pathway between our reactants and our products is not direct go over some maximum. And then we can label this difference here between the energy of our reactants and our products as being our enthalpy change. In this case we're looking at an endothermic reaction because our reactants are lower energy than our products. And then you'll remember that this energy here, this energy difference between our reactants and the highest energy point on our reaction profile, that is what is our activation energy. And you can think of it a bit like sort of an energy hill that we need to get over. Once we get to the top of this hill, our species will naturally just roll downhill in energy to the products. But in order to get these reactants to go to these products, we first got to give them enough energy to get them to the very top of this hill so they can just roll down the other side. And that amount of energy you need to get for the reaction to sort of start, to initiate, to be activated, is the activation energy. We can draw something similar for an exothermic reaction as well. Uh, this time our activation energy is this energy difference here between the reactants and the highest energy point. And that's actually the general rule. Whether it's exo or endothermic, our activation energy is the difference in energy between our reactants and the highest energy point on our energy profile. Okay, the final thing to understand about collision theory is how it deals with the kinetic energy of particles. So collision theory is based on what's called the kinetic theory of gases. So you really don't need to know very much about the kinetic theory of gases, but essentially it's, again, another, it's a model for the way that gases behave. It makes a series of assumptions in order to give us some simple relationships between things like pressure, temperature, and kinetic energy. And one of these simple relationships that we then carry through into collision theory is that the temperature of your system is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the species in the sample. So here we have Ke and this line above means average kinetic energy. If you have a system of however many particles, they're all going to have different kinetic energies. They're all going to be moving at different speeds. But the average kinetic energy of all of those particles is going to be equal to 3 over 2 multiplied by Boltzmann's constant, which is in your data booklet, multiplied by the temperature. Importantly, that's going to be in Kelvin.
And fundamentally, what this means is that if we increase the temperature of the reactants, we are on average increasing their kinetic energy, and therefore we're going to increase, on average, the amount of energy that they collide with. That's all we really need to take home from here. We increase the temperature, we increase the average kinetic energy of particles, therefore they're going to be colliding with more energy normally. Okay, key points to take home from this video. We saw that collision theory treats reactants under the kinetic theory of gases. We make a bunch of assumptions about how those gases behave, hard spheres moving around randomly, these kind of things. We saw there are three conditions under collision theory for a successful reaction to take place. We must collide, we must collide with sufficient energy, and we must collide in the correct orientation. We saw that this sufficient energy is more formally known as the activation energy. It's the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to take place represents the difference between the energy of the reactants and the highest energy point on your reaction profile. And then finally, we saw that the average kinetic energy of particles is proportional to the temperature of your system under this kinetic theory of gases. That formula is in your data booklet.